Hello and welcome to the first of many biology lectures. Today we're going to talk about the introduction to biology, the characteristics of life, and the scientific method. So this is quite a long one, so make sure that you've got your jetpack strapped on and we're ready to go. Biology is simply the study of life and its processes. It incorporates physics, mathematics, chemistry, and other um, other subdisciplines. It, it is truly a multidisciplinary science. To define life, though, you know, biology studies life, so define li defining life can be tricky. This picture is of a microarthropod called a tardigrade. It's my favorite picture because it's usually the type of critter they use when they show uh, pictures on the tabloid paper saying Martians have landed and such. Anyway, it is called a cryptobiotic organism because it can have hidden life. In other words, it can sit for a hundred years, dried out in a jar, and we've done this. Um, but when you add water, it suddenly comes to life. And it, it is an example of defining life is so difficult. And so living things exhibit a certain set of characteristics, but not all living things show all of them. And that's kind of a, a big debate here in biology. So the first thing is that living things show growth, which means adding more cells or ma more mass or stuff to the one cell that they have, depending on the organism we're talking about. Development is also um, a characteristic of living things. It's the change in structures or functions throughout the life of the individual. Metabolism is the total of all chemical reactions that occur in an organism, and it can also be viewed as how an organism obtains and uses energy. Reproduction is a tricky one because reproduction is necessary for the survival of a species, but it is not necessary for the survival of an individual. And so that can be a sticky wicket for a lot of people defining life because, you know, just because I don't have children doesn't mean that I'm not alive kind of thing. Um, and so it is a characteristic of life because living things do that, but it is not necessary for the life of the individual. Response to the environment is particularly impressive, and you can even see this in single-celled organisms. This is a reaction that occurs because of a stimulus or a change in the environment. And you can see here this crawfish is reacting to that ball. One of the main defining, like if you wanted to say the one thing that defines life versus non-life, it's this. All living things are made up of one or more cells. If it doesn't have a cell, it ain't alive. And that's kind of the way you go about it. And so um, there's a lot of things out there like viruses and prions. You know, these things cause disease, but they're not made of cells, so they're not alive technically. They only show one form of life, and that's reproduction. Uh, everything else they don't have. All living things have nucleic acid codes, either DNA or RNA or both. There must be a code for the proteins and chemical processes that the organism does. And that code is stored for in the nucleic acids of the organism. All organisms show some type of organization, whether it's internally in one cell or if it's, if it's multicellular, ex, you know, external to the one cell. It could be a lot of different things, but there's a hierarchy of life from smallest to largest, that is the atomic level, the molecular level, and then living things start because you start with cells. Okay, so at the cell level, you have all living things. Above the cellular level, you may not have all living things, but you do have living things, and that would include tissues, organs, organ systems, multicellular organisms. Beyond that, you go to um, populations, which are all one species. Sorry about that. There we go. Populations, which are all one species. Communities, which are many species types living in the same area. Ecosystems, which are the living things and the non-living parts of their environment. A biome, which is groups of ecosystems according to elevation and temperature and precipitation and stuff. And then the biosphere, which contains all of the life on this planet. 
So there's quite a bit of hierarchy. Living things also change over time. Now, not every species evolves, okay, but almost all of them do. And species evolved, but individuals do not. And that's one of those misnomers that people think of. They go, oh, I'm a highly evolved individual. No, you're not. You're an, you're an individual of an evolved species. Um, you're not a highly evolved individual. It just makes you sound stupid. Um, <laughs> but living things do change over time, but species evolve, not individuals, not even populations, really. Okay, so that's going to stop the preliminaries, and we're going to pick up part two with the scientific method in just, in just a moment. Uh, so make sure that you click on part two for this, and uh, we will round out lecture one with that. Have a great day.